Hello, 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 it's Attorney Mike Grab. I'm coming to you from Chicago. As usual, we've got some fun clips today. I can't believe this. I was just putting it together. I'm doing this as a wild courts moment, and it's number 100. I, you know, I, I can't believe I have a playlist with 100 videos on it, but, but I do. I do. And the, the other thing about it is every single one of those videos is a masterpiece. That, that's what you have to know about wild court moments. <laughs> <laughs> and this video is no exception. It's it's top notch. I assure you. <laughs> I assure you. It's it's the bomb. All right. So let's uh, let's get the party started here, shall we? Let me show immediately. Excuse me. Okay. Hello. Uh -oh. Who are you? Hi. Hi, this is Nathalie Mason, but my phone keeps messing up just since so I just want to know, did you call my name yet? It keeps like going out and then okay, coming back so You can't just interrupt the court. No, I didn't call your name. Okay, so thank you. We did call his name. Hold on. Yes, we, we did call it, Your Honor. What did he say his name was? It's Mason, Mason. the last name. It's Nathalie Mason. Yeah, I know. We. Yeah. Hang on. I've been on here since 11 o'clock. Okay, but if your name's not on there, we don't know. When it's on there now, they I changed. know, we, we did that, yes. I know, I, I figured that. <laughs> By the way, I need to thank Jessica for sending this to me. There's links to the video in the description below. It takes you to her page. I think she's got them up. I don't know if she's just giving them to me or if she's got them public, but I, th I think she does. Uh, you know, I've got a good uh, Judge Fresh Hour video coming up. This is all Washtenaw County here. It's 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 Washtenaw County uh, uh, day here at Law Talk with Mike. But this was just too good. Do you still have the file? He's What'd we do on it? You got it? Yeah. Always a good idea. Check in with LSG. Court recalls the case, people versus Nathalie Mason. I will cancel the board. Thank you, Jesus. Caitlin Kirby, on behalf of the people. No, it's it's judge, but go ahead. Assistant Public Defender Melissa Kleeman on behalf of Mr. Please. All right, what are we doing on this? And she does want to take a plea as charged today. Um, Ma'am, do you have video capability? Can you turn your camera on? My camera is on. I mean, I'm looking at two. I don't know what's going on with this. Okay, <laughs> wait a minute. Let me see. Okay. It's it. This woman is busted for shoplifting, but she's a hoot, and she does not she does not contest anything. She just rolls with it. It's stop video, I guess. I don't know. Um, let me see. Maybe I should turn it around. I don't know. Can you see me now? Uh, I can see. Wait, I'm, I'm in, in my bedroom and it's dark. I'm going out oh, to the living room. Okay. Okay. I can see a room. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I see a chair. I don't see yeah. it. Okay, wait a minute. Let me try to switch it back. I don't know how to do it, but I'm a, okay. Here you go. Okay. okay. I do oh, see you. <laughs> She's going to plead as charge. That's correct. Yes, sir. Raise your right hand, ma'am. Indeed. Do you solemnly swear or affirm testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes, sir. State your name for the record. Nathalie Mason. All right. Ms. Mason, is this court's understanding you're going to plead guilty to the charge of retail fraud second degree? Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's a misdemeanor punishable by up to one year incarceration, $2,000 fine plus court costs. Fine can be increased if three times the value of the property taken is greater than $2,000. You understand that? Yes, sir. All right. You can put is your hand down. Ontario? Okay. <laughs> all right. Understanding all of that to that charge, how do you plead? I plead guilty. Now, you understand that by pleading guilty, you'll not have a trial of any kind? Yes, sir. All right. Because of that, you're giving up certain rights. You're giving up your right to call witnesses to speak to you at trial or to have this court compel their attendance. 
You're giving up your right to see, hear, and question witnesses against you at trial. You're also giving up your right to be a witness for yourself or to remain silent and have that silence used against you. And you're giving up your right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You understand that? Yes, sir. You understand you're giving up your right to appeal of right? Yes, sir. Are you on probation? No, sir. Are you on parole? No, sir. Has anybody promised you anything to get you to plead guilty? No, my attorney just called and said the prosecutor offered me probation and something else she said. I can't remember. There, there was no offer, but you'd be facing probation. Oh, okay. All right. Anybody threaten you or coerce you? No, sir. You're doing this voluntarily? Yes, sir. Of your own free will? Yes, sir. And because you believe that you are indeed guilty of this offense? I'm guilty. <laughs> April 17, 2021, at the location of 3825 Carpenter Road, Pittsfield Township, Washington County, State of Michigan, that being the Meyer store. I know. What, what did you do? Went in and concealed several items into some bags and attempted to exit the store. I was stopped by, uh, I guess, loss prevention. Oh. I mean, that is so refreshing after all, all the videos you see on here. I mean, okay, she did something she shouldn't do. She just, here it is. Here's your factual basis. I did it. I'm guilty. Let's carry on. Okay. Stop. Stop and the, on my way out the and door. The, okay. And the items that you, the store was open to the public at the time, wasn't it? Yes. Thank you, Kim. Okay. These items that you took, these were items that were offered for sale by Meyer? Yes, sir. And you didn't have anybody's permission to take that property, did you? No, sir. And the total amount of the property that you took, was that in excess of $200? Um, I believe it was four something. He said 400 and some dollars. I'm not sure. So that would be more than 200, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Counts uh, that's cute. He's looking for the statutory minimum for a charge, uh, you know, of shoplifting. I'm sure it has to exceed 200 to for that particular code provision. <laughs> she's, she's of course, giving him the the, uh, the exact amount <laughs> after they calculated it and busted her for it. That's funny. So, have I complied with the court rule and will it be proper to the defendant's plea? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Or will accept the defendant's plea of guilty to this charge. Defendant is referred to probation for a pre-sentence investigation and report Sentencing in this matter will be August 10th, 2022. Nine. Thank you, Jess. Uh, Jess is the one who sent it to me. She's got a channel. Go over there and give her some love. Thanks again. A.M. August 10th, 2022 at 9. Okay. Yes, that's when you got to come back and see me, but you got to see probation before that. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So just, uh, just since I'm not gonna have a warrant, Emma. <laughs> Why you want me to give you one? No. <laughs> okay, then no, you don't have a warrant. I canceled it. You're good. Okay, thank you. All right. If you want, you guys warrant, have a bless. You guys have a bless. You you do the same. I mean, how sweet. She's busted. She she pleads guilty. She's afraid about a warrant. It's like no, you came and you faced your problem. You pled guilty to a shoplifting. There's no warrant. There, there'll be a sentencing. There are consequences for it, but there's no warrant. You know, it, it was just cute that she was worried about that. Take care. All right, that finished. That concludes our 11 o'clock block. All right. Of course, we'll stand in brief recess, and then we'll head into the 12 o'clock block. Hi, this is Frankie with the Sovereign Citizen Patrol, and I'd like to remind you to please hit like and subscribe, or I'll be personally offended. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Robert Elman with the... Yes, Jessica, I'm covering Blandino tomorrow. I will put a I will put a thing up. Um, it's it's at 10:30 Central Time. I'm going to be using our Nevada judges stream, and uh, big shout out to our Nevada judges. And so if you don't want to hear me talk over it, just go straight there because that's the stream I'm watching. Um, but I have to I, I absolutely have to follow through with the sentencing on Kim Blandino. I, I spent so much time on that. That that was like my that was like my personal debt herd case. Like <laughs> there was there's me and a handful of you know maybe maybe Artie and uh, 
and you know Natalie or something covering that, but really, really nobody else. And then, then of course, we have the Deaf Bird debacle. On behalf of Mr. Hsu, who eight zero State of Michigan versus Jeremy Hsu. Are you ready? Okay. Case number two two four zero one eight zero, State of Michigan versus Jeremy Hsu. Laura Wallenberg on behalf of the people. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Robert Elman with and on behalf of Mr. Hsu, who is present through Zoom and who is at the Washtenaw County Jail. Okay, so there's Robert Elman. He's he's attorney for the defendant who's top right. Um, and he has a terrible, awful, no good day. <laughs> He is a fantastic attorney in my estimation. He does everything to to help the situation, but his his client does not help the situation. Mr. Shu, can you state your name? Jeremy Shu. You really think it's appropriate to try to talk to the victim while you're on Zoom? I'm guessing from your tone that you don't think it is. <laughs> Because it's not, the judge is completely right. She was talking to me. I didn't. I didn't say There's anything. No to contact her. order. Mr. Elman, have you had an opportunity to speak with him, or do you need a breakout room with him? I I met with him yesterday, Your Honor. We spoke yesterday. I don't believe there's anything new we need to discuss. Unless so we're ready to proceed on the bond violation hearing. Yes, Your Honor. Um, may we approach briefly? Sure. Can you put myself, Miss Willingbring? and Mr. Elman into a breakout room. We don't get to see the breakout room, but, uh, you know, I'm sure it went down something like Attorney Elman saying, y you see what I'm dealing with here, Judge. I'll, I'll get him in line as best I can. Uh, you know, all this stuff, they, they don't want to have uh, the defendant or the victim there because th here's where they can, you know, act actually talk and figure out what's going on. Then we come back and, and he's contemplating entering a plea. Somebody may have to withdraw. You ready, Karen? Yeah. We are back on the record in State of Michigan versus Jeremy Shu. Laura Willenberg on behalf of the people. Robert Elman with and on behalf of Mr. Shu. Mr. Shu, can you state your name? <laughs> Jeremy Shu, still here. Okay. And Mr. Alman, what are we doing today? Your Honor, um, thank you for that bench conference, first of all. But as we discussed at bench, it's my understanding after meeting with Mr. Shu that he, um, I guess, does wish to admit to the, uh, the added bond violation, which is the phone calls, however, um, not the original bond violation that he was previously picked up on on the 18th. Mr. Shu, can you raise your right hand? Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Lower your hand to state and spell your name for the record. Jeremy Shu, J-E-R-E-M-Y-S-D-A-U-H. Sir, it's the court's understanding that you're going to be pleading guilty to this violation of bond. Do you understand that if you plead guilty or are found guilty of violating your bond, the court can revoke your bond and hold you in custody while this case is pending? Yes, I do. And is that still what you'd like to do today? Um, is it, may I may I address the court prior to? Can I say? Can, can put you into a breakout room with your attorney, but I'm here to take a plea, or we can. If, you can talk you, to your attorney. If you'd like to speak with me, Mr. Shu, we should do that now. I I would advise you to only strictly answer the judge's questions in terms of your plea and not make any additional statements. If if there's something you'd like to say, I think we should get a breakout room and you should run it by me first. Translation, oh, please, for the love of God, shut your mouth. I just talked to you. I know what's in your heart. It's not going to go well with the judge. Let me handle it. Would you like to speak? Uh, with, yes. Would you like the opportunity to speak to your attorney? Okay, if we could put Mr. Shu into a breakout room with Mr. Elman, please. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Did you show the judge? I don't know if what they're doing. You're on muted. Sorry. Back on the record in State of Michigan versus Jeremy Shu. Honor Willenbring for the people. Robert Elman with and on behalf of Mr. Shu. Thank you for that breakout room, Your Honor. Mr. Shu, can you state your name again? My name is Jeremy Shu. 
Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Elman. Your Honor, it's it's my understanding that Mr. Shu uh, still intends to admit to the bond violation as it relates to the phone calls today. Is that correct, Mr. Shu? Yes, sir. Okay, let's try that again. Mr. Shu, can you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Lower your hand. State your name for the record, please. Jeremy Shu. Sir, it's the court's understanding that you're going to be pleading guilty to a bond violation. Do you understand that if you are found guilty or plead guilty to a violation of bond, the court can hold you in custody while this case is pending and revoke your bond? Do you understand that? Yes, I do. And is that still what you'd like to do today? Yes, I. Yes, it is. Has anyone promised you anything to get you to, to plead guilty to this bond violation? No, ma'am. Has anyone threatened you? No, ma'am. This is your own choice? Yes, ma'am. What do you what did you do that makes you think you're in violation of your bond? I while I was in jail, I called my fiance, spoke to her on the phone. The court Yeah, yeah, not just while you were in jail, while you were on Zoom with the judge observing it. <laughs> there was another bond violation, but he chose to to plead to this one instead of that one. I don't know. The judge is willing to do it. As long as she, you know, he's in violation. If she if she violates him one way, that's fine. Then then she can do whatever it is that she wants to do. And that was in violation of your no contact order. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. Thank you, John. The court will accept the violation of bond, admission to the violation of bond. Mr. Elman or Miss Willingbring, is there anything um, anyone would like to say? Before I address the bond, I, I would, Your Honor. I, I do believe that the complaining witness is here. I believe there's something she would like to say, and I think it may be relevant to the issue of bond. Okay. Your Honor, may I address the court prior to the yes. victim? Uh, Your Honor, as you know, Mr. Shu had a no contact order with uh, the complaining witness in this case, Ms. Eaton. Um, at the time, he was brought into custody on 623. Between 623 and 627, he called her 15 times. Uh, he was arraigned on new felony witness tampering charges on 627, uh, and he was arraigned and no less than, I would say, 30 minutes after he was arraigned, told that he could not contact the victim. He again called her, uh, referred to her as mom, but called her number, uh, and at this point, their voices are recognizable to me, the officer involved, and the victim advocate. Uh, in, Ms. in calls with Ms. Uton, he's also made concerning uh, remarks about suing everyone involved, threats to the victim advocate about finding her information and sending the U.S. Marshals to her house, uh, threats that were honestly scary and inappropriate, uh, also threats to sue your honor. Uh, Mr. Shu has never showed up to court on his own volition, has only been there uh, in custody. I think he has an exceedingly difficult time following the court's orders. Yeah, yeah the, Anna doesn't like this guy already. Judge Anna has had enough, but uh, the, the threats to SWAT and docs are, are not helping. Or taking them seriously. Uh, and given the new charges, I don't think contact is appropriate, uh, even if uh, Ms. Uten, uh Tells your honor today that she would like it. Uh, defendant quite simply has no respect for this court or its order or its orders. Uh, so I am asking that your honor uh, revoke Mr. Shu's phone privileges, other than uh, phone calls to his attorney. Uh, he every call that he makes is either to Miss Uton or to someone else in order to get a new number for her or in order to contact her through someone else. Yes, so I think a, a revocation of his throne privileges would be appropriate. And I also would ask that he remain in custody at this time. He has a PCC on the 7th. The There's also a no the contact order in place via that, those felony charges as well. Thank you. Your Honor, if I could respond to that briefly. Um, I have had a chance to listen to the phone calls that were provided to me. And, and yes, Mr. Shu has had contact with the complaining witness. However, I don't believe, I guess, personally that those phone calls, they, they were not overtly threatening in any way. Um, yes, he did threaten to, I guess if you want to call it threaten, he threatened to sue. Um, 
you know, members of the county, including the victim's advocate. He did ask for her address, but specifically in that phone call, he asked for her address so that he could serve her with a lawsuit. And so I, I don't. Okay. I, I just want to defend this attorney right now. What, what he's saying sounds crazy. He's tr but he's trying to defend, he's trying to put the best face on the horrible conduct of his client. Uh, Robert Elman, in, in my estimation, is a bright guy, but he has got nothing. I, I mean, he really deserves a medal for today. He really does. I don't know, at least in my opinion, Your Honor, I don't believe these to be as physically threatening or as troublesome as this will and bring. Yeah, it was a violation. Yeah, it's inappropriate, but it wasn't physically threatening. That's what he's got, and that's the argument he's making. Um, I would also state that, under my understanding of these phone calls, you know, the, the complaining witness states many times that she loves him. They are engaged. I believe that she wants that contact, and I think she's here today to tell you that as well. And it should be noted that, um, you know, he's been in custody on this since I believe. Uh, June 18th and has, according to him, served a total of 31 days already in custody on this case. <clears throat> I am, uh, Mr. Shu. is there an officer with you? Yes, he's right here. Okay. I'm happy to allow her back into the meeting. However, given your behavior when she was on I won't, uh, I won't say nothing. No, I'm going to ask the officer to turn off your video at this time because I don't want you mouthing words to her or kissy faces or anything other that's clearly also in violation of your bond since I made it very clear that you're not to have any contact with her. So I'm going to ask the officer to turn off your video and I will allow her in at that point. So I'm not allowed to see what what is said. You'll be able or... to see. I got absolutely scorched for saying a similar thing. And I apologize, and I, I take it back. See, she won't see you, so she won't see you making any faces or gestures okay, that's, that's, at you. That's fine, man. That's all. That's all. I wanted to make sure. Thank you. Ma'am, can you state your name? You'll have to unmute yourself. Oh, yes, my name is Donna Uten. Good morning, ma'am. It's my understanding that you had you wanted to say something in regards to Mr. Shu's bond. Yes, I did. Um, I don't understand how this all got exactly. blown crazy out of proportion. It was a verbal argument, and I honestly started the argument. Um, this is all. <laughs> look at Judge. Look at Judge Anna's uh, expression. Is a little. <laughs> Let me explain to you why I don't care. Oh. Seating anything that I would ever want in my life. Like, I love Jeremy to pieces, and I plan on having a home with him and a relationship and building our family. My kids miss him dearly, and this has all, like, been a hardship on our family. And it's not worth anything that's happening right now for us to be away from him. We feel like our hearts are teared apart and the, our home is torn apart all right torn but you know conjugation is at least your problems here this is what you get i was a prosecutor for a long time and people get so upset with me this is what you get not sometimes like 98 percent of the time and this is the frustration this is the frustration in the system i understand it it's human nature i i'm, I'm not trying to be mean to people but this is what you get all over an argument we're both trying to figure out our mental health. If we could be subjected, you know, have do therapy or something, something like that would work. But it, this isn't right. And I've had my wishes taken away by the advocates because they kept telling me that I didn't have to show up and that it was okay. And all of this, that they would take care of it. And nothing's been taken care of. They all went against what I wanted. Thank you for that, Ms. Eaton. Is there anything further, Mr. Elman? Your Honor, uh, just briefly, I believe, and correct me, Ms. Willenbrand, if I'm wrong, but Mr. Shu does have a bond 
in the felony matter that if he was able to make bond, he would be um, released on tether. And I would just put that in front of your honor as an option if you, for some reason, still didn't want him to have um, contact with the complaining witness. However, <laughs> this guy is, I mean, I'm, I'm just gaining respect for Robert Elman. Um, he's got the worst case ever. He's like, you know, in the unlikely event that you don't want him to have contact with her, which he knows is 100 percent that, you know, he will have a tether so you can order him away. He's trying to bust his client out, which is a, which is a good thing. He's, he's looking out for his client's interests, but he sees all the problems. I would ask that you adjust his bond to no non-consensual contact this time. No, non essential. Oh, that's that, that is wishful thinking, and he knows it, but uh, we'll see. Anything further from the people? Nothing further, Your Honor. Okay, <clears throat> first, thank you, Miss Eaton, for coming here um, and speaking to me about the situation. Um, I can't speak, I don't want to speak on behalf of the victim's advocates, but I will say that they have been in court and I I think that um, ultimately what happens in these cases is that I'm the one who makes the final decision. Um, so it's, um, I, I, I know from working with these advocates in the past that they do their best to represent you as best as they can and I hope that you will continue to work with them because I do think they have your best interest and really I take what they say to seriously and, and certainly take into account whenever I'm making a decision. Um, but ultimately that decision is mine. And um, so I hope you don't hold them at fault for anything, any decisions that I have. They are really a helpful resource um, and might help be able to guide you to other resources that you're looking for. As far as- I really like that. I really like the judge saying, yeah, you know, what's about to happen here, you're not going to like, and it's me. I'm making the decision. It's, it's, uh, I, it's just, it's, it's very admirable. Uh, and she, so like, don't, don't get upset with these advocates. I've seen enough and I'm the one who's going to decide what happens here. You're not going to like it, but it's not the advocate's fault. As, um, Mr. Shoes Bond, um, there's a few things that are concerning in this case. Um, certainly the fact that I have very clearly stated what the bond conditions were and what the expectations were. Mr. Shu, um, whether he agreed with the bond conditions doesn't really matter. And Frankly, these decisions that I make, I don't ever make them lightly. I appreciate that people have very, um, have varying circumstances that, um, and relationships can be complicated. Um, ultimately, my concern is certainly safety for you, Missy, and in this case, um, and public safety. And when these conditions are set out, that's what they're intended to do. Um, since the beginning of this case, Mr. Shu has repeatedly not respected a single order that I have given regarding contact. Um, today, Ms., um, Mr. Shu pled guilty to the bond violation of having contact no. um, with the try. victim in this case directly against my order. Additionally, the context of that of those phone calls and that contact resulted in additional felony charges. Um, he was again ordered to not contact and he just doesn't seem to care or respect what the court has asked him to stop doing. Um, I appreciate that Missy and you would like to have contact with him. It is not just my order now. Now he has an order in um, the felony matter 
that there's also to be no contact. Yeah, yes, the raising hands is funny because it's ineffective. The, the judge is speaking, they're not going to stop. But I will say it beats the heck out of a lot of these people who just uh, interrupt and, and interject. It is more polite. It, it is more polite approach than that. It, it truly is. What you really have to do is just wait your turn. I am going to continue that no contact order. I, at this time, am, okay. I will... I had previously revoked his bond. I will give him a bond. I will set that bond at $10,000 cash. If he is able to post that bond, he will be on a GPS tether and will not be permitted to return back to that big Pine Drive location. I'm sorry, Miss Willingbring, is it the Dexter Pinkney Road? Is that the correct location? See right there when the, when, when he said, hey, you know what? He's going to have a tether off a felony charge. Um, th that was code for the judge of, y y you know, th there's a way to track him if you let him out. And it did help his client. So while this guy looks silly, arguing the horrible facts his client provided him, he's being very effective. Yes, Your Honor. It's the Dexter. Then he, he will not be permitted to return. I will be back appealing this order. I believe the judge is biased. To the Dexter, to the Dexter Pinkney Road address. I would like for the judge. To, I would like for a different. I am no. appealing this order. I will be filing. Oh Lord. This oh, Lord. um. Now we now we've got the tag team. Um, she she the the victim wants a different judge, and uh, and knucklehead says he's going to be appealing the order. Uh, look at look at the the horror on his attorney's face. <laughs> Mr. Shu, I want to make it very clear that if you are able to be released on that GPS tether, you will not be permitted to return to five. 721 Dexter Pinckney Road in Dexter, Michigan. Do you understand that, Mr. Shu? I am appealing the judge's order. I believe the judge is biased. You should have disqualified Mr. yourself from the very, That's very beginning. I, I appreciate your... I don't give a fuck what you say. <laughs> I apologize, Your Honor. We've gone full fez. Any reason I shouldn't hold him in contempt and just keep him in court, in jail? Your Honor, given his relationship with the complaining witness, this is a very emotional time for him, and, and I, I hope that that outburst was um, accidental given his emotional state. Okay, that that was yes, that was a horrible argument. It was the best argument that he could make. All he did was slow things down and let everybody take a breath. His client, uh, you know, drops the f bomb on the judge in anger, and and what are you supposed to do? Defend it? You can't defend it. So he says, oh, "I think it's emotional," which it clearly is. But uh, again, this guy, this guy deserves an award. This matter is set for final settlement conference on August 9th. Two thousand twenty-two at one PM. I, I love that. I love that. Just very calm. Here's what here, here here's the next hearing date. You're in contempt. A GPS order. I don't think I have one over here. There will be an immediate pickup if, the viol if there's a violation of the GPS or any of the conditions as I've laid them out previously. Mr. Shu, there's to be absolutely no contact with the victim in this case. That is not directly or indirectly. That means no more phone calls. To you her. are violating my constitutional no. right to be married. You are violating no her more. constitutional right. I will be. No more. Um, no text. You're violating my constitutional right to be married. I mean, 
one, one could Im- argue that implicitly from the Constitution, I suppose, but it's not in there. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not a well recognized thing that you just bark out in court and everyone goes, oh, okay, fair enough. Messages don't try to contact a third party to get them to contact her on your behalf. <clears throat> I'm also going to order that your phone privileges are revoked at the jail, except for contact with your attorney. Thank you, Jess. You know this video isn't going to like itself. Anything further from either counsel? No, Your Honor. Thank you. No, Your Honor. Thank you very much. And this court is adjourned. Well, there you have it. Uh, that was that was just too much fun. I was discussing this one with um, Old Squishy Gardener, uh, and he and he was aware of the clip too. I think he's doing a video on it, and I think he's going to have additional material. I don't know. I don't know if he's here. Go ask him. But I, I think he's I think he's going to do a video on this, and and I think he has additional court appearances that he was chasing down uh, regarding it. So I, I'm sure that will be fantastic. Uh, but that that was too good uh, you, you know i was i i had that it was sent to me thank you i don't know i i can't remember where somebody a viewer sent it to me and thank you for it and i i was doing that and then of course jess sends me the uh the judge simpson <laughs> i'm not jesus i'm just a judge <laughs> that was well played i i know i know i i i go to judge simpson too much but i, I mean i'm sorry he is he has crazy stuff happen in his court every day. <laughs> this was also Washington County, though. This is also Washington County. It's very exciting over there, apparently. I don't know. I spent four years of my life in Washington County, namely in Ann Arbor, going to uh, undergraduate school. So I, I, I'm familiar with Washington County. It, it, I don't remember. I don't recall it being that exciting. <laughs> I mean, you know, we'd have an occasional uh, football game. You know, that, that was fun, I suppose. And then, and then we had class. That was basically it. All right. Well, thank you all for coming out. I think I have. All, I think I got all the super chats. I think I did. Thank you all for coming out. Oh wait, wait, wait. There's, there's, there's something else we need to discuss. It's happening. It's on like Donkey Kong. Tomorrow, the sentencing. Kim Blandino. Ben Bateman, out in Nevada. It's it's gonna happen. I'm gonna be there, 10:30 Central Time. And I, like I said, I'm I'm gonna be using our Nevada judges' stream. It, it should be fantastic. I'd like to have Dubber there, but I'm sure she's working. I have a clue. So, oh, I, I almost forgot. That's that's big stuff. So I'll, I'll put a link up for that. Um, should be 1030 tomorrow morning. I, I don't know how long it'll take. I mean, the sentencing, they could knock it out in 10 minutes, but they won't with Kim Blandino involved. It might be a 17-hour event. I'm, I, who knows? It could go anywhere in between. Oh, wait. wait. Judge Tenek did a Hamilton parody. No, no, that just didn't happen. I have to see. I have to see, I want to see, uh, it's Drew Tenak, isn't, isn't that right? I have to see him cut loose. I, I need to go out and have some beers with him because when he sits there and people are just like dropping F-bombs on him and, and saying crazy stuff, and he's like, okay. <laughs> I, 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 know, I know that's not all there is. I, I know he's got a wicked sense of humor buried in there and he's just, he's just suppressing it all and just just coping and getting through that 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 call i know it all right so i will i will see anyone who's interested tomorrow morning for the for the kim blandino thing uh when, when the dust settles maybe I'll, maybe i'll get ben bateman on to 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 give his or, or who knows kim blandino you know you know kim likes to come on the channel <laughs> and it's always fun when he does so all right Thank you all. Oh, I see Uncivil Law showed up. Hey, how you doing? Go check out Uncivil Law. That's that, that's that's always fun as well. I will see you guys uh, tomorrow.